So what I wanted to suggest is that, uh, in fact, there's a research project here because there's some very interesting research material that's never really been looked at. And some of the, uh, the terminology that I've been talking about, like the use of the term Hinduism by missionaries, for example, there's the fact that there were Indian preachers who acted as mediators between the missionaries and other people. This material lies, there's reports of mission of the Indian preachers' papers are in a lot of different missionary societies. And what these Indian preachers were trying to do was to translate what the missionaries were saying about Hinduism into what ordinary people would understand. And I think that that's one way to go, that's one source that would, would help us to understand uh, how, how this notion, these concepts, these colonial ideas were being fed into a much more general sort of Indian context. I think that's, that's um, one thing. The other thing is that I think a lot of missionaries and others at the time and later were very much aware of these linguistic <coughs> problems. And so, you know, you had the activities of, of Bible societies and the history of these societies and the process by which they came to translate Indian concepts. There's nobody's done any recent history on Bible societies, history of translations and so on. Now, you know, there is the United um, Bible Society in New York and so on, but this is uh, done by, this is sort of monopolised by people who are in the trade, so to speak, who, who, who are engaged in dialogue with people of other faiths. But what you need is a, historical, a study by historians and linguists who are outside that, who are looking at the, the different kinds of translations that were taking place and the different translations used uh, for all sorts of concepts in the 19th century in, in, that, in that sense. formulated the two points you began with in a very productive way. And I think we should combine the two points. Because you see, if you say that religion is what it is because of the way in which it is experienced, and that experience is structured by a conceptual framework, including concepts of religion, worship, faith, etc., and particular relations between those concepts in the case of Christianity. Now when Europeans came to India and saw the local traditions, they structured their experience through that conceptual framework. They see these traditions as religions, worship, doctrine, gods, etc. And they also establish particular relationships. I and mean, you see the stories, traditional stories as doctrines, practices as the embodiment of these doctrines. So in that sense, as Balu said yesterday, Hinduism becomes a unit of experience for the Europeans. Now, I think we all agree that Indian traditions are experienced through a completely different conceptual framework. <coughs> and we don't know what that framework is or what the experience was like. I mean, otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Now, we do know that stories were not viewed as doctrines, practices were not the embodiment of doctrines, etc. But in the colonial encounter, Indians, Hindus, Jains, whatever you want to call them, face face a completely different framework or a completely different set of concepts and descriptions of their traditions as religion, worship, doctrine. They begin to adopt some of these terms and try to talk about their traditions in this way. And I think here Akhil's point is very important. That adoption of European terms and descriptions did have an important impact. But what was the impact? I mean, and that's where Vivek's question comes in. Did that transform Hindu traditions, Jain traditions, Buddhist traditions into religions? No, because Indians adopted the terms and some of the descriptions, but not the framework within which those concepts made sense and were interrelated. So, I mean, to conclude, basically, I think a double occlusion occurred. On the one hand, the original framework of experience lost its clarity, accessibility, because the European terms and descriptions were adopted, and some of the Sanskrit and vernacular terms were used to translate those, and that's the first distortion. 
On the other hand, concepts that were adopted from European Christians like religion, worship, God, faith, were distorted because they were mapped onto the Indian experience of puja, stories, practices. I think that's, to combine the two points, that's the problem we face today. It's this double exclusion. This is, I think, a very fascinating question. Uh, I don't know if there is, uh, I mean, I would not think of Foucault as a constructionist, though it is a very popular uh, 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 interpretation of him. Is, uh, he talked about history of sexuality and sexuality as something constructed. Whereas I take the view that is completely mistaken, that I take the view that Foucault argued something like, I think, what Balu argued, that actually sexuality was in a very serious sense, a way of talking which completely occluded a domain of experience. And for him, the question was, how did this happen? Why did this, all this sort of garbage science, I mean, what he calls scientia sexualis, you know, that early psychiatry and rubbish like that, you know, began to proliferate and people picked up, and he, of course, puts Freud there happily. I mean, uh, that way of talk, talking about uh, 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 something, presumably experience, but actually, he wanted to show that it, it isn't. So he did not say that the discourse of this actually created an object. Though that is how in academia now he is being interpreted as. But that doesn't explain why the hell did he go back to Rome and Greece. He went back to Rome and Greece precisely to say that this was not needed. You have erotic domain and there are other ways to talk about erotic domain. They, have, they were perfectly happy to do so. And there's something puzzling about the modern world where this kind of way of talking has, has this this is I think this is about a brief one. It's a very I know the very controversial argument, but I think this is this is exactly how it should be seen. But the point that hacking picked up, which I think is not Foucauldian, but obviously very important one, doesn't work for religion and I will try to later you know give it uh, layer it in a, in a complex way. It doesn't, you can see it simply by taking a, a very uh, a real example or near real example in the sense that this is a possible world, <laughs> you know, a near variant of a real world. That is, there is a movement in, 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 in Karnataka today. There is a community called Lingayats. Now, uh, except for PC, they are not religious because they are trying to prove that things <laughs> can be constructed. Now, they are actually demanding that they be, they be recognized as a religion. Right. Now, it is quite possible that the state in its wisdom, because the post-colonial state is capable of all miracles, right? It can create religion too. <laughs> it will give them the, 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 the... Suppose they do. What happens? I will say nothing happens. I mean, it, it, it does not become religion. That they will classify themselves as, as religious, sure. And they will, they will uh, demand uh, 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 that the state give them all the benefits that <laughs> that accrue to the <laughs> religious or a religious minority, because that's what they're trying to uh, aim and for. But how does that make them religious? It does not. Now, in fact, in sim at a simple level, this and we can come, you know, we can put other complexities around this. This is what actually happens even in the colonial period. Really. So there is a counter that the state is, and there is people who, who look at it. But nothing else happens. The, the whole thing that you described which I missed, unfortunately, uh, 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 about, about uh, the ex religion as an experience, the, the structuring of, of the experience of the world, uh, that doesn't happen. So this this what, what here happens, you know. So to then say that, look, there is religion in India, or the colonial state, great religion is in some way a very sloppy way of speaking. I mean, it, it, is, it is really a misleading way of speaking. Uh, uh, 